Well, good morning, everyone. What a gorgeous day. Whether you think it's a gorgeous day or not outside, it is a gorgeous day as we are able to gather together as God's people. A few announcements to make uh, with you this morning, whether we are on site or online. Uh, first and foremost, sympathy to the family of Betty Weddle. Uh, Deb Rain and Lee Cooper are here with us this morning. Deb is the daughter to Betty. She turned, if you remember, a few uh, Sundays ago, we sang happy birthday to Betty, a uh, hundred years old. So uh, she is with the Lord. We celebrate life and everlasting life. Betty's funeral will be here this coming Friday at 11 o'clock. Calling hours will be 9 to 11, the service at 11, and then there will be a meal in the fellowship hall immediately afterwards. You will notice as well that we have a bell tower update uh, for you concerning with the property committee and the bell tower funding committee as to where the project is, so please make note of that. And also in a few Sundays, a few weeks from now actually, we're going to be having vacation Bible school. So if you know of any children who you believe would benefit from that experience, please let them know uh, as we have the dates and all the information there for you. If you are interested in helping out with VBS, we invite you to uh, make the appropriate contacts as well. Again, that information is there in your bulletin insert. Well, this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it as we prepare our hearts and minds to worship our God. the Lord so we sing to his glory and praise him 449 we know that Christ is raised as we continue the Easter season please rise Together we turn to page 98 in the front of our hymnals as we continue our service of worship of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, page 98. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. 
for this holy house and for all who offer here the worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Bonnie for God, you gather your people into your realm and you promise us food from your tree of life. Nourish us with your word that empowered by your spirit we may love one another in the world you have made. Through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. It is now time for Noah's Park Children's Church. concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Setting sail, therefore, from Troas, we made a direct voyage to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia, and a Roman colony. We remained in this city some days. And on the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate to the riverside, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who had come together. One who heard us was a woman named Lydia from the city of Iatria, a seller of purple goods, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to give heed to what was said by Paul. And when she was baptized with her household, she besought us, saying, 
If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come to my house and stay. And she prevailed upon us. The next reading comes from Psalm 67. Let us read this responsibly. May God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face shine upon us. That thy way may be known upon earth, thy saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise thee, O God, let all the peoples praise thee. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou dost judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise thee, O God, let all the peoples praise thee. The earth has yielded its increase. God, our God, has blessed us. God has blessed us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. The second reading comes from the book of Revelations, chapter 21, verses 10 and 22 to 22, 5. And in the spirit he carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. And I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine upon it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. By its light shall the nations walk, and the kings of the earth shall bring their glory into it. And the gates shall never be shut by day, and there shall be no night there. They shall bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean shall enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then he showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also, on the other side of the river, the tree of life with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There shall no more be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall worship him. They shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads, and night shall be no more. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they shall reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. the Holy Gospel for you God's people as it is written in the Gospel according to St. John the 14th chapter and Jesus answered him if a man loves me he will keep my word my father will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him he who does not love me does not keep my words and the word which you hear is not mine but the father's who sent me these things I have spoken to you while I'm still with you but the counselor the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I go away and I will come to you. If you love me, you would have rejoiced because I go to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place so that when it does take place, you may believe. The word of God, word of life. Praise Please be seated. So grace be on you in peace in God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Well, you may or may not have, have heard it, but there was this one fellow who, who died, passed away and, and went to heaven. 
And so St. Peter gave this fellow the grand tour of what the kingdom of heaven looked like. I mean, it was spectacular. Words that we use to try to describe heaven just do not do it justice. But it was absolutely amazing. It was full of wonderment and awe. But as Peter was giving this fellow a tour of heaven, he noticed there was this just huge room off to the side. And it was filled with clocks, 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 everywhere, clocks. And so he asked Peter, he says, well, what's with the room and what's with all these clocks? Peter goes, oh, well, those are sin clocks. Every time a person sins, their clock, the hands on their clock moves. Oh. So he's just kind of looking, observing around. He goes, well, Peter, whose clock is that? He goes, oh, that was Mother Teresa's clock. But, you know, the hands on her clock, they <laughs> rarely moved, if ever. Okay, and kept walking around looking and said, well, whose clock is that? And Peter goes, oh, that was Abraham Lincoln's clock. I mean, you know, the hands on his clock, you know, they move once in a while, but, but not very often, say the least. And the fellow's looking around more and more and he goes, well, Peter, where, where's my clock? And Peter goes, oh, pfft, your clock? Well, we've been using that as a, as a ceiling fan for quite some time. <laughs> Now, for those of you who are sitting near one of our ceiling fans, do not take that personally. Just telling you right now. But thank goodness then for God's grace. I mean, on our own, we can't deliver the goods. When God demands absolute holiness and perfection for those to come and enter into the kingdom, <laughs> that means none of us. But only because of what Jesus has done for us in his birth and life and death and resurrection and that gift given to us are we then clothed with the righteousness of Christ and able to enter into and cross the threshold of heaven you ever stop and think about it though you know what's what's heaven like what what is heaven really really like. Hollywood gives us all these different images and understandings, you know, whether it's Bruce Almighty or whatever other kind of movies or, or TV shows, but, but really, what is heaven like? Well, what I would like for us to do is go on a tour of heaven today, that we, we take a, a little mini pilgrimage Mark shared with us here just a few moments ago uh, selections from chapters 21 and 22 of the book of Revelation. And those two chapters are the culmination, not only of Revelation, but also of the entire book of the Bible. And here we get a snippet, just a, a sneak preview, a foretaste of the feast to come of the kingdom of heaven or the new Jerusalem or the city of God, whichever word you wish to use. It is amazing and it is spectacular. And what happens here is that Jesus is giving an epiphany, a vision, a revelation, hence the title of the book, a revelation to one of his disciples, John, who is imprisoned and exiled on the island of Patmos. And it's in this revelation that we get just a mini, mini portrait of heaven. Now, mind you, I, I, I get it as well. Revelation can be kind of a, a spooky book in the Bible. Martin Luther, he said if he had it his way, he would have taken it out of the New Testament. It can be spooky, it can be scary. Quite honestly, the book of Revelation with a lot of its imagery and language and all, it can get rather bizarre. It really can. But if you approach the book of Revelation, from the understanding that it is a book of hope. And not everyone who teaches and preaches on Revelation is a proponent of that. But my training and my background is the book of Revelation is a book of hope. To a community of seven churches 2,000 years ago who are being persecuted because of their faith. And they desperately needed a fresh word from the Lord to keep them going. 
And Revelation is that word. It is a book of hope. And quite honestly, if push came to shove and someone were to ask me, Pastor, what is, in, in a few words, give me the elevator speech, what is the book of Revelation? What is its theme message, its main message? And it is this, keep the faith, baby. If you understand that, you will have a better understanding of Revelation because it is inspiring and it is challenging the early community and you and I to keep the faith against all odds because we have the Spirit of God dwelling within us and the grace of God empowering us. So, as an angel gave John a Patmos in this vision a tour of the kingdom of heaven, Let's do the same as well. Let's go on a little pilgrimage and get a sneak preview of the foretaste of the feast to come. And what we see then in verse 22 in this vision that is given to John, and he reflects on this and says, I saw no temple. This is huge. I saw no temple in the city, meaning heaven or the city of God. For this temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And Lamb is code language for Lamb of God, Jesus the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. We read this in the Gospel of John. The temple in the Ancient of Days began as the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, when the uh, children of Israel were wandering into the wilderness after their exodus from uh, Egypt. And they did this for 40 years. This is where heaven and earth met. The divine and human met. This was the place where you encountered God. It was in a tent. And then later, under King Solomon, it was this incredibly beautiful, ginormous building. And then that got ripped down, and then it was during Ezra and Nehemiah, and then that one, and then you have the one under Herod during the time of Jesus, which was huge. You can still see evidence of the Temple Mount of today. But there is no temple in heaven because God is the temple. All of heaven is sacred, holy of holies, but God is fully present. There are no barriers. There's no interference. You have absolute, complete access, totally, more than what we already do now. And that is incredible. Can you imagine? Think of the person that you dearly love, that you just truly enjoy spending time with. And now it is God. By the millionth, billionth, trillionth power to the exponential whatever, this is what heaven is that you are able to be in absolute full communion with God. And it just doesn't get any better than that. And there's no sun, there's no moon, there's no night, as we see in this vision. But God is the light. And God's presence is always shining upon his people in the kingdom of heaven. He is, as we say, hear Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and the one true God lighting up the world of heaven. Now then, you may think, well then who gets to enjoy this incredible place? Only those whose names are written in the Lamb or Christ's book of life. The book of life. Some of you really enjoy reading books. I love books. Some of you, now maybe you're the modern version on Kindle, that's still reading a book. But who is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? These are the people of God. God's name is on their foreheads, as we see, written in uh, this vision. So God's name on people's foreheads, not the mark of the beast, as in chapter 13, the old 666 and all that stuff, but God's name for God's people. When we experience the baptismal liturgy and towards the end of it, and this is one of the powerful significance of baptism with the oil, you will see whether it's on an infant, a teen, an adult, an elderly person, we go, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit and you are marked with the cross, the tattoo of the cross of Christ forever. God's name on your forehead. And what do they do? They serve God's purposes, and they are worshiping. We get to celebrate crossing the threshold into the kingdom of heaven. 
It is eternity of absolute life, the way God intended life to be, in its fullness and splendor and glory. And we are worshiping him in a way that we can't even begin to fathom. Now you may think, well, isn't God a little egotistical then? That he wants us to worship him forever, under eternity, in the kingdom of heaven? Isn't, that, isn't God kind of full of himself and wanting us to do that? Well, stop and think for a moment. If you're the creator of heaven and earth and all the solar systems, if you're the creator of the entire universe and you allow your only begotten son to die for people who are not always faithful to him and do not always accept him and to worship him for eternity, I think he's earned that right. Truly. God deserves our full worship and love. And that's what we get to do in heaven forever and ever. Amen. So who is not admitted? What is uh, shared in the vision here? For those with no admission are those who are the unrepentant. Those who just absolutely refuse to repent of sin and come and welcome the acceptance of our God. Now let's go a little bit further. Here again is another promise. And they shall see God's face. This is in verse 4. This is a huge privilege that you and I get when we are part of the kingdom of God. It's one thing to read a letter that's written to you from someone you love. It's another thing to talk to them on the phone. It's still another thing to have Zoom or FaceTime with them. But to be present there, one-on-one -on -one with that special person, and to be able to see their eyes and maybe even touch their face, that is something special. For those of you who have a spouse, isn't it something? Isn't it amazing how you love them so much that you look deep into their eyes and you practically worship the ground that they walk on? Am I right on this? Yes? Younger couples? Yes? No? Okay, yes, we got a few nods back there going, I know the right answer on this. Of course, yes, dear. All right. But there is something incredibly beautiful when you are able to be with that person that you deeply love and look into their eyes and see face to face. And now the supreme power of all creation, you get to do this. Now, the Bible encourages us to seek the face of God in this lifetime because of his love and encouragement and power and glory and justice. But to be able to do that completely is reserved for the kingdom of heaven. Isaiah wasn't able to do this. Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Moses, all the Bible heroes, no. But this is something that is reserved special for those whose names are written in the book of life to be able to see the face of God. On January 28th, 1986, some of you are old enough to remember this, some of you are not. But on January of 1986, President Ronald Reagan, who was supposed to give the State of the Union address that evening, decided otherwise. Instead, he addressed the country because earlier that morning, the space shuttle Challenger had exploded not too long after takeoff. He gave, I thought, one of the most incredible speeches in a time of crisis that a president could give. But it was the final words of that speech. I still get goosebumps, and I get them now, 36 years later, when I hear these words. And this is how he concluded his speech. The crew of the Space Shuttle Challenger honored us by the manner in which they lived their lives. We will never forget them, nor the last time we saw them this morning, as they prepared for their journey and waved goodbye and slipped the surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God. That is the gift that is given to be able to touch the face and to see the face of God. That is heaven. 
Paul wrote it this way in the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13. For now we see in a mirror dimly, then we shall see face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall be known fully, even as I am fully known. This is the greatness and graciousness of our God and its gifts in heaven. But we're still on the tour of heaven. There's still more that is being said on this pilgrimage. There is what's called the river of the water of life. Now think about this. Water is so important to us. The average body is about 60% water. Our blood is about 90% water, and the Earth's surface is covered with about roughly 71% of the Earth's surface is covered with water. It is so vital and so important for our existence. We live in the Auglaes River watershed, which is part of the Maumee River watershed. In the ancient world, water was extremely vital, but the sea or rivers could act as a boundary, a barrier, or a source of chaos and fear. But here, in the city of God, the new Jerusalem, the kingdom of heaven, water is a fountain of life that is ever flowing from the throne of God. In this water, as we see, it is crystal clear, clear as crystal. So maybe, just maybe, that's why when I look at my wife, Crystal, I'm reminded of heaven. Yes. And that, that now I, ooh, all right, but yeah, right. Okay, okay. She knows when it comes to being a romantic, I was not given that gift. So I just take it when I can. We had our anniversary yesterday, by the way, so happy anniversary, sweetie. So, can you believe? Oh, well, thank you. I just want you to know that applause is for you and not for me, right? <laughs> I, I hear that, I sympathize with you. Okay, so, but anyhow, the water, this goes down the main street, as it is written in these chapters, the main street of the city of God, and the main street, made of gold, but the gold is as transparent as glass. Kind of an interesting thought when you think about it. It is a gift, this water of life. And then as we read further, the tree of life is on both sides, the main street, both sides of this river. Now, coming into Van Wert as you pass the marsh, it's a tree-lined street. I always love that, especially in spring and summer when the leaves are out, fall when it's changing color, and it's the tree-lined and the trees meet each other over the road. It's just a beautiful sight. This is, this is the image that we are being given. But these trees, there's 12 different kinds of fruit. There is no more hunger. And there is no more starvation. There is no more forbidden fruit. This is now a reverse of the curse. And Eden, the Garden of Eden, is once again being restored. And the leaves on these trees, it says, are for the healing of the nations. And there is no more pain or sorrow or disease or tears. And God is at the center of it all, where we can seek his face. So there is this German shepherd and a Doberman, and we got to include as well a cat. So, so we have two cats. I totally get this story. For those of you who have cats, you'll be going, hmm, typical, typical, typical. But this a German shepherd and a Doberman and a cat died and went to heaven, and they were facing God, and God wanted to know what they believed in. So the German shepherd went first. And the shepherd said to God, I believe in discipline and training and loyalty to my master. God said, ah, German shepherd, come to my right. He said, Doberman, what about you? What do you believe? Well, Doberman said, I believe in love 
and care and protection of my master. Ah, God said, very good. Come to my left. And God, who, of course, is superior in knowledge and wisdom and understanding of all things, comes to the cat. <sighs> cat, what do you believe in? And cat says to God, I believe you are in my seat. <laughs> mm-hmm. Typical cat. So we ask the question, do you believe like the cat? God, you're in my seat. It is my life. And it is my world. And I will do as I darn well please. And I am the one in control. Because I am in charge of my life. And you are not, thank you very much. Oh, you might be involved in this area, this area. I'll let you in on some of that. But the rest of it, mm-mm. No admittance. No, nope, don't even try. Don't bother. Are you like the cat when it comes to God? Or perhaps are you like the German shepherd and the dome? And don't read too much into this that, oh, pastor just doesn't like cats. No. Okay. But are, you, are we like the German shepherd and the Doberman who really understand their purpose in God's world? This is what I know what my life is about. And what God is calling me to be and to do. In other words, we as Christ church, as we think of what's being shared here through Jesus' vision to John of Patmos, we as Christ church are claimed by God to be that new Jerusalem, that city on a hill, not complete, not perfect, but still a source of light in what can often be a, a scary world. Yet Jesus tells us in the Gospel of John, he shares these words in which he says, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And then in Matthew, in his Sermon on the Mount, he says, therefore, you are the light of the world. You and I are the light of the world as followers of Jesus. A city built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. And then we hear the words that are in our baptismal liturgy. Words from Jesus. Let your light so shine before others, that they may see your good works, and give glory to your Father in heaven. As Christ's church, we acknowledge the difficulty of daily life, and we also acknowledge the deepest longings of the human heart. And so we are called to be a source of hope, a place of love, and one of faith. We pray this, folks, every Sunday in the Lord's Prayer. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what a vision, what an epiphany, what a revelation that Jesus gives to John of Patmos and to us of what is to be here and now and what is to come, the spectacular forever future with God. The kingdom of heaven, the new Jerusalem, the city of God. I really hope, and it is my prayer, that you will take the time this week, maybe today, only take five to ten minutes, if that. Read the final two chapters of the final book of the Bible, Revelation 21 and 22. And after reading that, it is really my hope and my prayer that when you are done, you will just go, wow. What a God that we worship. And what a Lord that we live for each and every day. And thank you, Jesus, for the gift of the kingdom of heaven. And may it be so, not just in heaven, but may we be instruments of that on earth. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hymn 826, Thine the Amen. Please stand. We turn to page 105 in the front of our hymnals. With the whole church, let us confess our resurrection faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and for all of God's creation. Lord God, with the indwelling of your Holy Spirit, power us, we pray, to be the hands and feet of Jesus throughout your world. This morning, we pray on behalf of Luke Kaufman, Rod Bowen, Dean Kirkendall, Lilani Daly, Dakota Neuheiser, Joelle Parker, Myra Friesner, Art Bauer, Mike Arn, Jeannie Snyder, for Shannon Cole, Kenny Bridgman, for Dennis Cole, Amber Arn, Tracy Treon, for Betty Lou Tomlinson, for the family and friends of Betty Weddle. We give you thanks, Lord, for Daniel and Alicia Thompson, who were united yesterday in holy matrimony. And we lift up to you our graduating seniors and for their future for peace in the regions of Ukraine and Russia, Poland, and other nations. O oh Lord Jesus, shepherd and guardian of our souls, teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share the peace of our Christ with one another. A reminder that our offering boxes are at both exits of the sanctuary. If you wish to give electronically, you can do so by going to our church website, stmarkslutheranvw.com, or text 419-273-9947.
Let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed and beloved people of God and members of his forever family, God has shown you what is good. What does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God? So for the week to come, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. We conclude and are sent out into God's creation to do God's work. In 763, my life flows on in endless song.
is our choir's last Sunday um, for this year until things start up again this fall. They gave you uh, in worship their traditional go now in peace. They help enhance worship and lead worship. Everyone, uh, let us give them, to the glory of God, a warm St. Mark's thank you for all that they do. Have a great week, everyone. God bless each of you.